Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at another released free response question off of the AP Calc exam. This particular question was on the exam in 2008, and it came off of the AB version. It was a calculator question, so I have my calculator handy. So let's go ahead and read through the problem. So oil is leaking from a pipeline on the surface of a lake and forms an oil slick whose volume increases at a constant rate of 2,000 cubic centimeters per minute. I'm going to go ahead and write down any givens as we go through the problem. So the first one is this dv dt, so 2,000 cubic centimeters per minute. Okay, the oil slick takes the form of a right circular cylinder with both its radius and its height changing with time. Note, the volume of a right circular cylinder with radius r and height h is given by volume equals pi r squared h. Okay, so that's our introduction. I know I have this cylinder and both its radius and its height are increasing as, or changing with time. Let's take a look at part A. So, at the instant when the radius of the oil slick is 100 centimeters, centimeters and the height is 0.5 centimeter, The radius is increasing at a rate of 2.5 centimeters per minute. So I could call that dr dt. At this instant, what is the rate of change of the height of the oil slick with respect to time in centimeters per minute? So I'm looking for dh dt. So for a related rates problem, I can differentiate the volume function implicitly with respect to t. So let's go ahead and get started doing that. I know that v will become dv dt, and we were told that both r and h are changing with respect to time, so I'm going to need to differentiate them both. I wrote the volume wrong on the board, but that's okay. pi r squared times h, not divided. Okay, so to take the derivative of the right side of the equation, I'm going to want to use the product rule. So first I'm going to differentiate with respect to r. So I'm going to treat pi and h like constants, and I'm going to differentiate r squared to get 2r dr dt. So I have 2 pi r dr dt h. And then let's differentiate with respect to h. So pi r squared are going to be treated like constants. And then h is just going to become dh dt. OK, now let's go ahead and plug in what we know to the equation. Well, in the introduction to the problem, we were given dv dt to be 2,000 centimeters cubed per minute. And I was given in part A that R equals 100 centimeters. And I was given dr dt to be 2.5 centimeters per minute. And I was given H to be one half a centimeter. And then pi r is still 100. I'm running out of room. So 
So the only unknown I have in this equation is dh dt. And that's what I was asked to find in the problem, so I'm going to go ahead and solve for that. Let's go ahead and start by multiplying some things out. Well, 2,000 obviously doesn't really have anything to do. So we am going to multiply this part out. The 2 and the 0.5 cancel each other out. So I'm looking at 250 pi. Plus, and then 100 squared is 10,000. So I have 10,000 pi dh dt. Okay, so you could multiply these out using a calculator since this is one of the calculator questions. I just, a little lazy, and I'm just going to keep it in pi and then just put it in the end. So to solve for dhdt, first I want to move that 250 pi to the other side of the equation. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Right, subtract it from both sides. And then let's divide by 10,000 pi to get dhdt. So you can put this in your calculator, and I'm going to do the same. So 2,000 minus 250 pi divided by 10,000 pi. And my calculator is going to give me a fraction because I have a TI-89. But if you're using a TI-83, it'll give you a decimal approximation, which is 0.038. Remember when you're using the calculator on the AP exam that AP graders like you to give three decimal points and then you can either truncate that decimal or round. This estimate is truncated. If you were to round, you would get 0 0.039. Now we need some units. And we know that H is measured in centimeters and then DR and DV have minutes. So I'm gonna say that this is 0 0.038 centimeters per minute. And then you could write this out in a sentence. The, at this point, the height of the cylinder is changing at a rate of 0 0.038 centimeters per minute. So that answers our question for part A. Let's go ahead and move on to part B. I'm going to copy over some information. Okay, let's read through part B. A recovery device arrives at the scene and begins removing oil. The rate at which the oil is removed is given by R of T equals 400 times the square root of T. Cubic centimeters per minute. where T is the time in minutes since the device began working. Oil continues to leak at a rate of 2,000 cubic centimeters per minute. Find the time T when the oil slick reaches its maximum volume and justify your answer. Okay, so now I have some flow into my oil slick, which is... A constant rate of 2,000 centimeters cubed per minute and I have a variable outflow of 400 square root of t. So to find the point when eh, to find the point when it reaches its maximum volume I want to maximize some function of time that gives me volume. So I could think of the change in volume of the oil in the cylinder 
as the rate in minus the rate out. So I'm going to go ahead and write that equation. So to find a maximum, I know I need a critical value of v. So dv dt should equal 0. And I know if I want this function to equal 0, then 400 square root of t needs to equal 2,000. So I'll get 2,000 minus 2,000. And again, time for your calculator. The square root of t equals 2,000 divided by 400. 20 over 4. The square root of t equals 5, so t equals 25 seconds. Ah, minutes. Careful with your units. But how can I be sure this is a maximum? Well, I could check the sign of the derivative to see how it changes around t equals 25 minutes. I know if it's going to be a maximum for t less than 25, the derivative is going to be greater than 0. And then after that, it should be less than. So this is pretty easy to think about. If t is less than 25, 400 square roots of t is going to be smaller than 2,000, right? Because as t increases, the square root of t also increases. So I'm going to have 2,000 minus something less than 2,000. So it's going to be positive. And then after t equals 25, 400 square roots of t is going to be bigger than 2,000. So I'm going to have 2,000 minus something greater than itself, and I'm going to have a negative number. So yeah. T equals 25 minutes is the maximum for volume. Now that question asked us to justify our answer. So how I would do that is saying at t equals 25 minutes, dv dt equals 0. And for t 0 to 25, dv dt is greater than 0. And for t greater than 25, dv dt is less than 0. So first derivative test, t equals 25 is the maximum. Let's move on to part C. So by the time the recovery device begins removing oil, 60,000 cubic centimeters of oil had already leaked. So I could think about that as V of zero, right? Because in part B, we said that T was the minutes after the recovery devices began. And that is going to be cubic centimeters. So write, but do not evaluate, an expression involving an integral that gives the volume of oil at the time t found in part b. Well, that's 25 minutes. So I'm given my initial volume when the device begins removing oil. But I'm not given a function for the volume once it starts. But I am given the derivative, dv dt. And that was this portion. So to find the total oil volume over t equals 0 to t equals 25, I could take a definite integral of this equation. So let me write that out. So I'm going to integrate dv dt from t equals 0 to t equals 25. So that'll give me the volume from when the device starts removing oil. But to get the oil that was already there, I have to add in this V of 0. So I'm going to say I'm going to say V of 25 equals 60,000 plus the integral from 0 to 25 of 2,000 minus 400 square root of T dt. So right, but do not evaluate. That means I'm done. Let's check the scoring rubric and see how we did. So part A has a total possibility of four points. So you get one point for saying dv dt equals 2,000. 
and dr dt equals 2.5. We have both of those. And then we get two points for the expression for dv dt. And they have it as 2 pi r dr dt h, we have that, plus pi r squared dh dt. So that's right. And then you get one point for the answer. And they have 0 0.038 or 0 0.039 centimeters per minute. So we've got that. And we got all four points on part A. Let's check part B. So I could get a total of three points for part B. And I get one for saying R of T equals 2,000. Didn't write it down, but we did say it. So if I had been on the exam, I would have written it down. And then one for the answer, which is T equals 25 minutes. And one for the justification. And the justification they give is the exact same thing that I said. So since dv dt is greater than 0 for t between 0 and 25, and dv dt is less than 0 for t greater than 25, the oil slick reaches its maximum volume 25 minutes after the device began working. So we got all three points for part B. Let's move on to C. So C only gives two points. One for the limits and the initial condition. So integrating from 0 to 25 and adding that 60,000. We've got those. And one for the integrand, which is 2,000 minus R of T dt. Well, we have 400 square roots of T, but that is R of T. So that works. And we got all of our points. So I hope this video helps you with related rates questions on the AP Calc exam.